Welcome to On the Road to Freedom. You've joined us on a beautiful day. We got some good news for you this week. We're going to have a good time today. It's the truth of God's Word that's going to change your life and set you free and free indeed. So that's why we always stick to the Word. Jesus said it this way, if you continue in my word, you will be my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth that you know, it'll make you free. So glad to be out. You know, we've been through the fire furnace, and uh, I think the world, the word causes the fire. And uh, you know what? It's under my coat. It's somewhere shirt. One, two. It's my fault, guys. I put my coat on, and I was just wearing a coat. I just swore it for y'all today. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, um, I'm good. It's glad to be home. I'm glad to be home. I'm glad to be uh, here today. Know that I've been through the fire furnace. I want to tell you that first. Yeah. And we've been through the fire. And when you go through the valley of the shadow of death, there is no other place than the same. Uh, you know, you know God. You're a faith person. You know God can give you a headache, cancer, and none of them. Are, a problem with this God. That's He's right. God. That's right. Amen. And, and, he, and he can do the impossible if he can just find somebody he said that believes. That believes, yes. And the good thing is he knows me and you. Yes. He knows who believes and who doesn't. Yeah. We're the ones that don't. Mm -hmm. Always know what we believe. Mm -hmm. And that we're, that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about real faith. Because there's a whole lot of talk about faith. But what I've seen the last few years, I didn't know. Mm. Yeah, I learned some stuff that I didn't know. Now, God would have taught me that another way. There was a, he didn't give me cancer, and he didn't teach me anything that he couldn't have taught me over a cup of coffee sitting in my house. <laughs> you know what I mean? That would been his preference and mine. Mm. Mm. But I didn't learn it over a cup of coffee. I had to go through some... I had to go through what the Bible calls the test. Mm -hmm. You know, James, uh, the half-brother of Jesus said, it's the, the testing of your faith. And so the good news is we passed the test. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so I'm thankful to be home. Y'all get comfortable. Have a seat. Get comfortable. <laughs> Oh, and this is my wife, sweet Christy. I call her Sweet Lips. <laughs> yeah, but she's Christy, and she's going to give you some information. Amen. Well, we'll go quickly over this because we're so full today. Mylon is so full to preach the Word. So we wanted to tell you quickly, we have our website. You can get all the resources at our website. All of our teaching is free. All of our audio uh, even the CDs, while supplies last, we have those available at the table for free. And then the downloads, MP3 version is free on our website. Um, the new item since we've been here uh, was our, is our marriage book. And we have that available at the table, our testimony of how the Lord taught us to have heaven on earth in our marriage. And his plan for you is to have a honeymoon that never ends. So if you want to check that out at the table... And that's really all we wanted to share right now because we really want to focus on we'll what focus God. On today. Yeah, today what God has in store for us. So our, our. Also, we want to thank pastors George and Terry. This is such an honor for us. Oh, praise God for our pastors. Amen. Praise God for our pastors. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. And brother and sister Copeland, we love them dearly. 
Brother oh. Copeland called yesterday, prayed with us over this service. He's in agreement. Praise God for miracles, signs, and wonders yeah. today and demonstration of the power of God. And you know, I just want to side with my husband here and get in agreement with him and say, we declare to you, we're here to declare, we've come out of the fire. We've, we've come, come out. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. We're not going to come out. <laughs> we've come out. You know, Amen. hope is in the future. Yes. You hope next week you'll come to get a little better and a little stronger, mm -hmm. but faith is now. That's right. Now faith is. That's right. So he told us to quit saying, I'm coming out and start saying, I'm out. out. Yeah, that was on Friday. Good. I'm out, y'all. <laughs> that's right. So, Amen. This is good stuff. And so we wanted to go about it a little differently today. We wanted to, are you ready for that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we wanted to have, we have a prayer team that prays, has prayed for us for a year and a half now, prayed us through the fire. And that's Miss Ava Bennett and Esther and Linda and Mara and Rebecca. And yes, praise God for them. And if we'd like to have them come up and also Linda Rogers, if she's here, and Miss Jan Arbor is going to share a scripture with us. And we're going to have a time of prayer at the beginning. We're going about things a little differently today because the Lord told us he's going to do a new thing today. A new thing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You got your mind. <laughs> Look at all these first. powerful, mighty women of God up here. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Jen was praying with me yesterday, and she read me a scripture, and I want her to read that to you right before we pray, okay? Yes. Praise God. The Lord watches over his word to perform it. In Amen. Isaiah 43, 19, it says... Amen. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Yes. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive and know it? And will you not give heed to it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's it. We receive that. We receive yeah. that. Thank now, you, Lord. You God told thing. me he's going to do a new thing. Yeah. He didn't keep me away, uh, you know, around just to hang out and watch. He kept me around to do the job that he's anointed me and called me to do, and that's to teach his word. And when I went to him, like I always do, this has been going on for 40 years, I, I'm, you know. Um, so I got before him, like I always do. What do you want to talk about? It's a big Bible. I don't care. You know them, I don't, you know. Whatever you want, where you want to go is where I want to go. And so I started praying about it, and immediately he's sending that word to my heart. I'm doing, not you, Milo, not Billy Graham or Brother Copeland or, or Brother Hagen. I'm doing a new thing. Mm. Mm. If, you, if you really believe it, you start expecting it. If you believe it's going to be rainy tomorrow, you might have an umbrella. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, you get ready for what's happening. Yeah, yeah. What you expect to happen is what you really believe. Yeah. Now, I expect this afternoon, this morning, to be a brand new thing. I've been preaching for 43 years. I've, I've never preached what I'm going to preach today. Yeah. I've never preached, and I've never run a service this way. So I just want to tell y'all, get ready. You can watch, or you can participate. <laughs> Come on now. Come on now. This can be our day yeah. to start over. And some of us need to. I mean, God said that. You can get mad at me if you want to, but I believe, he, I believe I can say that. Some of us need to start over. I've been watching some stuff. Man, when you get, when, the, when they, when those doctors come to you and say, there's nothing else we can do, it's, that's when you're glad you're a believer. Yeah. And not just somebody yeah. goes to church. Amen. Amen. They're not the same thing. Mm -hmm. People who go to church all the time, a lot of them don't believe nothing. And, then, and so we don't believe in God. We believe God. There's a difference. I believe there's a Joe Biden. And he's my president and I pray for him, but uh, I don't always believe Joe Biden. And there's a, there's a huge difference. You got to make up your mind. Is God a man that he could lie? No, 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 no. 
This word right here is the truth. And by the way, there's only one. Whoever wants to tell theirs can tell it, but they're on the way to a lake of fire. That's dangerous business. You don't tell God he don't know the truth. That's dangerous business. So we're going to pray a little bit, and then we're going to get in the Word. We're going to have a good time today. Oh, and, and this might last two minutes. It might last 20. I have no idea. We're just going to follow God today. Yeah. We, might not, we might just pray a while and go home. <laughs> you know? Thank you, Lord. I will miss, miss out. Please, please. You got one. Thank you, Lord. Come on. I'll come up here, ladies. Y'all come on. Yeah, come on. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. So, um, I just want to quickly say this. Back on May 22nd, you know, Pastor Terry released a um, prayer call with a team of us. And uh, back on May 22nd, it was one of those uh, many profound calls. And um, from that prayer call, she gave a directive, and that is that we are to pray uh, for the supernatural. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Uh, pray for a door of the supernatural to open and pray for signs, wonders, and miracles. Yeah. Yeah. So that's basically what, how I'm going to start yeah. praying for over doors and praying over the door of miracles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, every day there's an opportunity to have a miracle. And uh, so we've been praying for doors of miracles, yeah. so we're expecting miracles, yeah, we and I'm are. praying for utterance That's for right. you all today, for That's signs right. and wonders and miracles. Yes, and um, on one of our calls, uh, prayer times for Mr. Milan, the Lord spoke this scripture to us, and he said, uh, Exodus 34, 10, in the New Living Translation, the Lord replied, listen, I am making a covenant with you in the presence of all these people, mm. I will perform miracles yeah. that have never, that sounds like the new what Jan read, right? Miracles that have never been performed anywhere in all the earth <laughs> or any nation. <laughs> and all the people around you will see the power of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, I feel the power right now. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. The awesome power I will display for you. So with that said, let's pray over these miracles, the supernatural. Oh, the doors of Rosketarada. Oh, Father, we lift up the doors now. Oh, Zagera Bokesheta Manaba. Doors of miracle, doors of signs, doors of wonders now. Bose Pericata. Oh, doors to the supernatural, supernatural utterance now. Supernatural revelation. Yeah, the door of revelation. Bode Kamanacha Kopapa. Bode Keske Mara Kodananama. Oh, Zabreko Tora. Oh, Zabreko Kora Mashka. Oh, doors now. Oh, for the miraculous now. An outpouring of the miraculous now. Zipa pota. Zipa pota kapapa. Zipa pota kapata. Zipa pota kapata. Zubra koshke mana dobra akapa. Oh, zabra po hosheke. Oh, rakoste mana bo rabashkana. Oh, zabra ya rakonara namba kasada. Open now. Aha, sopara now manaka dobra danama. Oh, Father, we thank you for doors now. Doors of the ages now. Oh, yes, Lord, doors now. Doors for miracles now. Doors for the supernatural now. Open up the Hasaloma, Mosegeta Poskata, and the miraculous power of God on display now. Only like you can do, Lord. Mosegrosa Marakota Naba, Ingrosakona Mashakota Naba, Mosarapa Tokanana Makana, Oh Hashukarana Marakota Naba. Utterance now. Divine expressions now. Coming through those doors. Oh, yes, a whole now. A new arbor now. A new arbor for the miraculous. A new arbor for the supernatural. A new arbor for miracles and miracles and miracles now. Oh, the boat is shaken, not a boat supply. Yeah, yeah, a divine supply. A divine supply now. Oh, the proper set of that. A divine supply of the spirit of Jesus Christ now. Oh, the miracles now, like never before. The miracles now open wide the door. Open wide. Oh, Rashatai, oh, Rashakero, do 
I heard this in my spirit. I heard an unhindered free flow of miracles like never before. An unhindered free flow of miracles like never before. I think we need to work that just a little bit. And then we'll go on to whatever you want, sir. Father, in the name of Jesus, that free flow, unhindered flow of miracles. Lord, an unhindered flow of miracles in the body. Lord, an unhindered flow of miracles in the mind. Lord, an unhindered flow of miracles in the families. Lord, an unhindered flow of miracles in the finances. Lord, an unhindered flow of miracles in children. Lord, an unhindered free flow of miracles. 
miracles washing over EMIC. Lord, of unhindered free flow of the miraculous power of God doing the new things in bodies, doing the new things in lives, doing the new things in the, in the church, doing new things in all areas of the life in the name of Jesus. New things, miracles opening up the door for the new things that you spoke about, sir. Yes, sir. John, you got something? I, I, I sense and believe that there's an anointing on the word that you are about to preach. Amen. Jesus. Yeah, Lord, glory to God. It's okay. Glory to God. There's an anointing on that word. Yeah. The Lord said, signs and wonders follow the preaching and teaching of the word. Yeah. Praise That's what's God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right, praise God. You okay, baby? I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. This church is healthy. This is a healthy church. You know what that sound, all I praying in tongues, you know what that's the sound of a healthy church? That is, man, that God, he's getting ready to do something, y'all. Get your specter out there. Get your help. Um, in the last days, he said, I'm going to do signs and wonders. Wonder what day this is at your house. Because their last day is coming. We're getting close. I mean, if you're looking around, if you can't see a sign and wonder these days, you can't see. It's all over the place. Everything he said he's going to do, he's doing it. You can see it on the internet. You can see it on TV. You don't just see it in your backyard. But you can see that too. Um, ladies, you, you want to preach? You want to say something? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I thought she was preaching the preach a little. You never know what my wife's going to do. Y'all, have a seat. Let me give you some word here. Because I believe all of a sudden the Lord, he wants me to talk to you about these signs and these wonders. I'm going to come down here with y'all. Come down here and hang out a little bit. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. <clears throat> In the last days. Does anybody believe these are last days? Yes, Brother Copeland said that there, there's a, we're in a little sliver of time. In the last of the last days. And I see things happening in the spirit that I didn't used to see. You, uh, I haven't preached since November of 22. I haven't been in the pulpit. I've done the TV show, the filming, because God told me, you know, there's a scripture that says, uh, I will show you my salvation and, and, and uh, deliver you from your destruction. <clears throat> now, I believe God's done that for me, and I told the Lord, you show it to me and I'll show it to them. Amen. Amen. So I believe it's time to do that. I would have waited another six months, but I believe the Lord said, uh, George told me eight days ago. No, you usually get a little bit further notice than that. <laughs> you might have time to organize a little bit, but no, eight days. And he's the boss. And, uh, you know, he'd been talking to the real boss. And, and so he, he said, I need you to come cover for me. And, and he's watching this morning. He and Terry, precious. Brother and sister, I mean precious. Yes, pastors, but so much more. Some prophets, so much more. So many, he wears so many hats, and she does too. I'm telling you, they, this church is their life. Amen. And that means you. Yes. Right. This church is in the building. That's right. It's you. Now, in order for you to get on this, this, I'm calling it real faith today. I'm going to give him scriptures, but unless you do something about it, it won't affect your life at all. You just watch, and a few people will get it. That's why usually happens. Every church has a nucleus of people who are really paying attention, really pressing in toward the high column, pressing toward the mark. I mean, every day, trying to get better, trying to eliminate mistakes, trying to eliminate. Here's what Jesus said. <laughs> Jesus said, if you continue in my word, you'll know the truth. 
Wonder what happens if you don't continue? You won't know the truth. You wouldn't have to continue if you already know the truth. That means in some areas, you're still deceived. Now, nobody wants to admit that, especially in faith circles. But man, if you, according to Jesus, you got to continue if you want to be his disciple. 24 hours a day, 365, every thought that you have, every word you speak, should go through the filter of God's word. If you want your life to be the one that he wants it to be. Now, without faith, he said, it's impossible to please him. If you think he would kid you or tell you a lie or do something to try, you know, he don't sell Bibles. He don't sell nothing. Everything God's got is free and freely given to you. And all you have to do is receive it. But if you want him to do that, man, you going to church is a waste of time. You might as well sleep in. <clears throat> because religion won't help you at all. If you face cancer, you better be ready. You better have some faith. But you get in the fight of faith. You know what Mike Tyson said? He said, everybody's got a strategy to beat me until I hit them in the mouth. <laughs> he hits them in the mouth one time, their strategy goes right out of the window. <clears throat> Everybody. He was a tough guy. Well, now you might not like fighting. I don't like it. I'm a man of peace. Man, Jesus, I, I love God and I love peace. I don't want to fight, fight with anybody. But if the devil wants to fight, you ain't got any choice. You get hit four or five times, you better get your guard up. And it's time, in the last days, he said there'll be perilous times that are hard to bear. And it's, there's a fight going on. And it's the last one. And you have, therefore, the last anointing, the final anointing that's going to be available to people on the earth. You are in that generation. Glory to God, man. <clears throat> have, you, have you read the scripture? Have you read the whole Bible and read all the things he says he's going to do toward the last day? Man, I mean, there's some stuff in there that's so miraculous. It's just amazing. I mean, I want to be a part of it, don't you? But I'm just my own. I don't know how to get up here there, just like you. How, God, I tell you, I want to be in on it. I want to do and know your perfect will, your perfect plan, your purpose. And I want to do it. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to just hear it. Hearing is good. Faith comes. But if you don't apply the faith, then you didn't do anything. You'll never do anything. If you're still in kindergarten faith-wise, you're going to be there, you know, you like it there. You like putting the, the square peg in the round hole. <laughs> And all that, it's real, so the tests are simple. You just go over between the lines. And you can do good in that church. But God wants this church, I'm going to say that real slow now, to get in on the signs and wonders. What is a wonder? It's when people go, I wonder what just happened. <laughs> wow, that was cool. Look what God's doing. What's he up to next? Because ever he doesn't, he doesn't mess around. God doesn't play church. People do, but God don't. God has a plan and a purpose in everything he does. This, to some of y'all that may not yet be filled with the Holy Spirit, standing up there talking a language where we don't even know what we're saying. You get, somebody might think, I used to think when I was a kid, I'd sit in my church and I was in Pentecostal church five or six years old and everybody go praying in tongues, rolling around, running, you know, carrying on. We didn't know what to call it. The Holy Ghost got to blame for everything. We did weird stuff, but the Holy Ghost got to blame for it. Because we like doing weird stuff. That's why we did it. We didn't do it because the Holy Ghost made us. We did it because we liked it because we thought other people we thought were cool doing it. So we did some of it too. But when you go to find the devil, you better do the same thing on Sunday that you do on Friday night. <laughs> the word of faith is we believe that's beginning. 
And the second part is, and we speak that word only. We speak the things that are not as though they were. We don't tell people I got cancer, but I, I won't have it someday. That's not faith. Faith is I don't have it. The devil doesn't have the right to put that on my body and therefore I don't receive it and I ain't going for it. Can y'all, is my mic on? To be, to have real faith, it means you're fully persuaded. Uh, Abraham, we all talked about in Sarah, prayed for the baby and the baby never came. They prayed for 70 years. That's a long time. You pray and you pray and you pray. And because God finally says, okay, I'm going to give it to you. And, and she says, you kid, really? <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, after said, you kidding? Now I'm too old, you know. Well, let me tell you something. Jesus proved for Lazarus, there's no such thing as too late. Right. Not to the living God. That's just, a, you know, uh, what, the, what time is it? Doesn't matter. He can change the time. He can run the clock back. He, he's God. <clears throat> so you got to decide when, when, when did he get fully persuaded? It took 25 years from the time he told Abraham he's going to have a baby so he had a baby. So he had a son. But at one year before the 25 years was up, he had to send an angel to change Abraham's name. And once people started calling him the guy with more kids than anybody else, when, when, and to his, to his credit, he told them, that's who I am now. If you want my attention, you got to call me the guy with more kids than anybody else, even though I don't have one. And that did it. Now, but everybody thought Abraham was crazy. Everybody, especially his family. Can anybody relate to that one? Yes. <laughs> I mean, they'll look at you like, you tell them, you, they see you holding on the wall and walk down the hall, and they'll say, what's the matter with you? You can't, you know, and you tell them, I'm strong. Why? Because the Bible says, let the weak say, don't say I'm weak. That won't get you. That'll keep you, well, you know, where you are. So God says, you got to talk different. And you won't do it. You'll never do it unless you believe different. Now, if you're still got some stuff you don't know, that's good because you will humble yourself and learn to get serious. You won't, I mean, the storm, y'all know you build your house on the sand. The Bible talks about, and one guy built his house on the rock, one, the word of God, and one built his on his own understanding. I did that. I got that house. I had it, I should, that house, I should say. <clears throat> I built uh, something on the sand. It wasn't a, a trailer, it was a castle. And boy, when that circle went down, it went down. <laughs> I'm talking about boom. There was nothing left but sand. And man, when you build your house, they give me a chance to start over. Me and Christy started over. Amen. Boy, oh boy. What? I moved to Texas to learn to live by faith, and it's a good thing I did, or I wouldn't be sitting here today. Glory to God. So who do you trust the most? Do you trust your outlook or do you trust you? I don't trust me. I'm, you know, I did some crazy stuff. And I'm thankful y'all don't know, but I made some choices that were so bad and so stupid that I trust God, but I don't trust mine. That boy, bless his heart, you know. I'm getting, <laughs> I'm getting better every day. I'm more like him every day. Because I want to be. I want to give in my life. So you got to decide. Humility means I'm through with me. God, I can't do this. Pride says, I got this. No problem. I learned this three years ago, and I got it. And in, in, uh, I've, put, I've been in both places. I got both T-shirts. <laughs> Humility is better. <clears throat> If you continue my word, you're my disciples indeed. You'll know the truth, if you, but you gotta continue. You gotta be a seeker. I mean, a seeker, what is a seeker? The Lord told me when he called me to preach, he said, 
I'm making you, I'm calling you, Mom, you think you're a musician. Your mom and dad and all those record companies you were with, they all think you're a musician. And your whole life is built around this, this image of you as a musician. And you believe it even. You spend so much time, these record companies, they all have promotion companies and, um, and, and you've got, but he said, I'm God and I'm calling you a teacher. And the fact that you think you're a musician is called imaginations in your life. If you don't cast the, not me. He said, I gave you, I'm not taking the music away from you. I'm not taking the gifts away from you. But I'm telling you, if you don't cast down those imaginations, they will come bigger than God, yes. my word in your life. Praise God. And so I had to quit being a musician only. There's nothing wrong with making music. Goodness gracious, I love to make music. But there is something more important. That's teaching what? It's not about me. It's not about me standing in front of that whoop, microphone with a guitar. It's about this is the word of God. It's more important than anything you'll ever come in contact with. The word of the living God, his name is Jesus. The word of the written God, the written word of God is, is the Bible. And if you learn it and you'll do it, and if God says, let no man put it asunder, what I put together, and you do it anyway, don't get mad at him when, it, when everything falls apart. <clears throat> don't get mad at God when, uh, when, you, you, when he tells you not to marry somebody that's unequally yoked with you, and you do it anyway because they're a good-looking guy with money. <clears throat> then when they get up in the middle of the night and do something you don't like and cuss you out and hit you, don't get mad at God. Amen. He tried to warn you. Right. You see how important it is? One sentence in the Bible can save you a whole lot of hurt. Amen. But one sentence is just a little bit part of the Bible. If you do those things, if you're a doer and not just a hearer only, man, it's going to change. This is going to be the best year of your life. He said in the last days, the description of religion I like this a lot. He said, a form of godliness that has no power. Oh, they got the formula, though. They know the formula. They know about the, about the choir and the band and the, taking up the offering and the baptistry and all the formula. They got the stuff. The, damn, boy, we can speak in King James. We got the formula. But the formula has no power unless you believe it and do it. Unless you believe it, you can resist the devil all you want to, but the sentence right before that says, submit to God. Yes. Now, if you submit to God, even then when you resist the devil, you'll have power behind you. Yes. Otherwise, you'll just be doing something religious. Right. Now, I, I have seen this last year, I stayed in that, uh, in the valley of the shadow. They told me a year ago that uh, they had done all they could do. I'd be, you know, they thought I could last two more months. And they offered to give me some dope. And I'm not bragging or anything, but I know about, more about dope than they do. <laughs> and I don't want any more. Right. You know, I've made the decision not to do that anymore. I'm not going to, so. Right. I told the doctor, I said, well, in a way that's good because then it's just me and Jesus. And he doesn't have to come to me with any of these 17% 17, 17 of the people I, uh, that pray this prayer, I, I, I give them a bad effect, you know, side effects. And every time they'd give me some treatment, they'd tell me how many people die and go cross-eyed and they, they can't walk and they don't want to have sex anymore. We ain't talking about that in church, are we? <laughs> Wait a minute. Well, it's important. We... Man, it's good to talk to God about just every word he said. There's not one discouraging word in the Bible. I mean, they're all good. Everything, all good things come above. Everything he does, everything he says, full of life. He sent his word and healed me. Praise God. His word is life to those who find out what it means. His word is life and health to all their flesh. His word is life and health to man. You, if you lean on your own understanding, then you, 
you'll have a form of godliness. Let me, let me read this. Put up 2 Timothy 3, 5, 1 through 5, please. Um, this form of, I want you to read it for yourself because you see this and you get in your heart. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5 in the New King James Version. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving. It ought to be easy. You know, as many things we've done wrong, and we can act like we hadn't, but we all have sinned and come short in the court of God. There isn't anybody in this room that hasn't done it, and I've done it. And I've done it since I got born again, not just before. I've sinned and had to have, repent before God, home myself, and start over more than once. And it is so good for you to know that you can have forgiveness. It's free. He'll give you, he'll forgive everything that you ever did wrong and let you start your life over unless you won't let anybody else do that. He said one person can stop you from getting it all. One person can stop you. If you don't forgive one person, it can stop you from getting your forgiveness. Jesus said that. Unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of God, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. From such, and then this sin is scary. From such people, turn away. Don't even hang out with them. Don't go to lunch with them. What if they go to your church? No, because God doesn't cause division and strife. God doesn't like any of this sin. He doesn't want us to do it. But he said in this statement, man, it's pretty radical. Don't even hang out with people who don't think this sin is sin. When I, how many of you know that God doesn't make suggestions? <laughs> Could y'all pray about tithing? No, because a lot of people are just praying about it, they ain't doing it. No, God doesn't, if he tells you to do something, he don't, he don't need to tell you twice. He's God. Amen. If you want his next time something goes wrong, you want that job at, and you, you want favor with the boss and, and you want, or that girl who won't pay you any attention, you want favor in her heart, <clears throat> it could be good at that time to have God on your side. <laughs> or you can just go on and you can be the Lord of your life and all you got to do is tell him no one time. All you got to do is ignore him. When he says forgive, he's not asking you to think about it. That's right. Or pray about it or vote on it. That's right. That's good. Most important decision you'll ever make is the word of God, the final word in your life. Yes. Because until you make the decision to make the word of God, the final word in your life, you will live a life that's not the rewarded one that he wants. He wants to give you such blessings. He wants to give you a life that's so good you can't imagine it yet. Until signs and wonders become, until the supernatural becomes natural. That's the will of God. I had somebody say to me one time, Man, you're so spiritual. All you talk about is what God's done, and this, and that, and that. All you talk about. And I said, God, man, I don't like people like that. Just speaking King James and all the time, and like uh, they're Holy Joe, you know. I mean, sometimes you got to go do some work, don't you? Don't you have a... And the Lord said, Son, I am spirit. Everything I do is spiritual. I don't do spiritual stuff. I don't do any of it. It's all me. If you want to get over here in the spirit and stay over here, I don't care what they think. Do you? You shouldn't. You, who are you? I mean, are you your spirit like the Bible says? Or, I mean, when people get their feelings hurt, what does that mean? What is it? It means you've got your pride hurt. And you can't get your pride hurt if you don't have any. We can do this, y'all. 
but we can't do it the way we're, we were going about it because you've got to make up your mind. We're talking about God Almighty who knows every word you say and every thought you have. He, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit if you're born again. That means if you're watching stuff on the internet, you shouldn't be watching. How many of you know that the, when you confess something, it ain't the first time God finds out about it? <laughs> now, how many of you believe that you can do stuff that you know is wrong, that you know he told you not to do, and he'll bless you for it? Because if you believe that, then you don't believe Deuteronomy 30, 19 says, choose you this day. I'm not choosing for you. God said, it's your choice, not mine. You choose obedience and blessing or you choose to ignore me and you get the curse by default. You don't, you don't even have to choose it. You just get it. And a lot of Christians... And at times in my own life, I've seen the curse show up. And I had to do something about it. And I had to get on my knees and I had to say, Lord God, forgive me for leaning on my own understanding. Help me to lean on you, my God, and on your word. You're not going to do the word of God, especially this tough stuff. We've talked about this. <clears throat> Somebody slaps you, the Bible says, turn the other cheek. I remember reading that the first time and I thought, good Lord. What is that about? Don't even. And I asked a Bible study teacher that I was going. He said, well, you get to that next few years. Don't worry about it. Just go on to the next page. <laughs> Somebody steals your coat, give me a shirt. That don't make sense. And, but if you stop at one thing that God said do and say, well, nobody else is doing that. Why should I have to? Nobody in the church is doing that. They all gossip, which you said not to. They all do it. Well, most of them, my family. Is it okay to say that? I mean, we, the people with the same last name as you have given you a, a good time and a hard time, but they've given you a little of both, right? And you got to decide where is God in all of this? And you got to decide what you can do to honor him because if you do that, he'll honor you. What do you want to do? What would you like to do with your life? What is the desire of your heart? Because he said, the light you have me and I'll give it to you. Now that's a deal. That's a good deal. Are you kidding me? Delight myself in the Lord? That's easy. He's good. Does he do bad things? Nothing, nothing. Has he over... Has he put uh, rules on us that we shouldn't have? No, not one time. Everything that he's told me to do, every single one of them made my life better. Yeah. The quality of my life. Um, the, most dis <clears throat> the most important decision, we already read that, it's the word of God, the final word in my life, in our lives. In other words, do you believe God or, or do you Believe in God. Now, here's the deal about God. There is a Bible is that thick. It's a big book, man. I mean, War and Peace, ain't, you know, this is a big book. <laughs> it's got lots of th conversation about lots of things. God has covered everything, every attitude, everything. And, and there's not one scripture that's not true. And truth is, is in a category of his own. There's only one truth. Whatever he says is true or the Bible says is true. And, and you can't, and there's a lot of people, I mean, you can get 20, 30, 40 million people to vote for something and like abortion. They'll say, well, it's okay because, you know, 70 or 50 people, million people vote for it. But have you thought about what abortion is? Now, let, me ask, let me ask you a question. It's the right to kill children. Right. Now, didn't, the, didn't God say, thou shalt not kill? Yes. Right. Should that even be a conversation? No. Especially if we go to the house of God Come on now. Come on. and vote. Yeah. Right. For a man, no, you don't vote for a man or a woman. 
You're a Christian now. I used to be a Lefebvre. Now I'm a Christian Lefebvre. He comes first. His kingdom, his righteousness, they come first all day, every day. So when I look at that man, I'm not looking at woman. I'm looking at the platform that they're voting on. Do I, does God say that's a good platform? It's okay. He, he's, they're not just voting on the right to kill kids. They're voting on the right to kill theirs. The right to kill your son and your daughter. I mean, you, re, you realize how crazy this is. God created man and woman and said, y'all now prosper. You know, fill the earth. Go ahead, have some children. Uh, man and woman are the only people who can do that. <laughs> it ought to be pretty obvious that there's only man and woman. That's what God said. Now, when somebody else says, no, that's not my truth, what they're saying is, we don't want any part of you, God. You go be somebody else's God. And he will. Thank God he's my God. Amen. And I want to do things his way. <clears throat> well, thou faith, it's impossible to, to, to please God. Man, I want to please him. I know you do too. Man, I'm, I'm so far behind here, baby. Come bail me out. Come uh, help me. I'm getting <laughs> way behind. And I just saw what time it is. And, um, well, I think what you just shared was so important about, you said this to me yesterday, and he made the point, um, what the statements he's making is this is not political, this is biblical. That's right. That's and I right. thought, wow, that's it. That's the bottom line. Thank God for Flashpoint. Yes. Thank, thank God, God for Gene and Gene Bailey all great and Flashpoint. I was so God. thankful. Amen. But I just, uh, I'm not called to that. I'm called to this. And my, my whole, the way I look at this is what's biblical and what isn't. Only. I don't care who the guy is that's running for office. I don't have any heroes. And especially to be able to fire everybody. But I voted for him because I believe he's God's man for, for this time. And, you know, I'll seek the Lord about who I vote for next time because that's his business. I will never vote against God. Yeah, that's the That's the quick. That's what I think he wants me to do. Amen. Amen. That's it. Praise God. You want me to just jump in there? Yeah, just okay. go for it. Well, you know, one scripture I wanted to share with you about is Isaiah 30, 15 through 16. And this has been real instrumental for us in this journey that we've walked through since we saw you last. And by the way, it's so good to see you all. You know, in case you don't know, this is our home church. And we just love you. We love you. Everywhere we go, when we have an opportunity to tell people about, about Eagle Mountain International Church, we do. We let everyone know this is where we attend. This is our spiritual covering. Pastor George and Terry Pearsons are our spiritual covering and brother and sister Copeland. So we are just so honored and we love you. I want you to know that we love you dearly. And so as we were walking through this, this scripture here in Isaiah, the Lord really ministered to us concerning this fight of faith we were in. And it says, For thus said the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning to me and resting in me, you shall be saved. In quietness and in trusting confidence shall be your strength. Thank you. But they said, but you would not. And you said, no, no. We will speed our own course on horses. We're going to do it our own way. Yeah. Therefore, you will speed in flight from your enemies. You said, well, we'll ride upon swift steeds. Again, doing it our own way. Therefore, will they who pursue you be swift? So God was trying to 
get him to a place of rest and peace, even in the midst of this attack, this threat, this urgent situation. And he was saying, if you'll just rest in me. Now, why is that? Because we know that real faith is what we're talking to you about today. Real faith enters what? The rest, right? So he says here in rest is your confidence. And trusting in me is your strength. But they said, oh, no, no, we're going to speed up the victory. <laughs> we're going to do it our own way. We can do this. We got this, which we know that's pride. So I want to encourage you in this, this um, coming to the Lord in complete and total trust. You know, when I uh, was seeking the Lord about trusting him, trusting him on a level that I've never walked in before. The Lord reminded me of this verse here. It's in Acts 16. And it's when the jailer came to Paul and Silas after it says that their chains were loose. Remember after they praised God and they were set free from those chains, that bondage. And the jailer came running to him and said, it scared him because he thought uh, they were just going to flee, right? And he looked at him and said, what must I do to be saved? And here was their response. Now, we know saved means, it's the Greek word sozo, so it means healed, it means delivered, it means preserved, it means protected. Hallelujah, it's the whole package. So you could say here, what must I do to be delivered? What must I do to be protected, preserved, and healed? And in Acts 16, 31 in the Amplified, they answered, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Here it is. Give yourself up to him. Yeah. Take yourself out of your own keeping. Say that again. And entrust yourself into his keeping. Yeah. And you will be saved. <laughs> you and your household <clears throat> notice this affects this choice to enter the rest, real faith, entering the rest affects you and your family. That's right. Amen. You know, I kept struggling with this. Maybe if I do this, maybe if I do this, it'll fix it. Maybe if I do this. And when I entered into rest, the Lord showed me I needed to cast again all my care upon him. That's where the humility comes in, humbling myself under the mighty yeah. hand of God, yeah, yeah. casting all my care on him, for he cares for me. Yes, you know, I heard Oral Roberts, we will not hurt him, I read in his book, um, if you need healing, do these things. And he said, I am responsible to God, but he also is responsible for me. Yeah. So when we encounter situations like this, what is our responsibility? Well, what we're seeing here is our responsibility is to believe. Take ourselves out of our own keeping yeah. and entrust ourselves into his keeping. That's our responsibility. The manifestation, the fulfillment of that promise is his responsibility. So when we cast the care into his hands, that's fully persuaded faith. That's yeah. real faith. Come on. Now, get ready. The manifestation's on its way. That's it. Right? That's, Amen. That's when Sarah got it. Right. That's when the promise was fulfilled, right? Yeah. yeah. Amen. So, you know, I just want to encourage those of you today, if you've been waiting, you know, for us, this has been a, a, a period, a time frame of waiting upon the Lord as we were fighting this fight of faith. It's been a process. Healing is a process. And so there were times where I just felt like, you know, just felt. So we, that's why you've got to ignore how you're feeling, right? You have to ignore that. You've got to choose to put your faith always in God's word, in what he promised you. Not feeling, not receiving that like the weight of the world is on your shoulders. If you've been feeling that way, it's because you've taken responsibility that's not yours to take. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Again, our responsibility is to believe, to give ourselves completely to him. How do we do that? Because I take myself. Yeah. I take my husband. I take my family, my job, my future, um, 
this nation. I take that out of my own keeping and I entrust it into his keeping. Amen. Amen. And me and my household will be saved. Yeah, come me on. and my household will be healed. Come on. We'll be delivered. We'll be yes, preserved. We'll be protected. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So I just want to encourage you in that. You know, um, again, this was a verse you and I've discussed. For I have been crucified with Christ. Mm. And it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Yes. And the life that I now live, I live yes. by faith in the Son of God. Mm. Amen. So I just encourage mm. you right now to cast all your care upon mm. the Lord. Yes. Entrust yourself, you. your family, your future <coughs> to His keeping. Amen. He is faithful. Yes. Hallelujah. And if you've been waiting, if it's been a, a time of waiting, right? If you've been in a season, of, a season of waiting upon the Lord, you know, Sarah waited. Abraham waited 25 years from the time of that original promise, waited upon the Lord. And it says, this is the last scripture I'd like to share, is Hebrews 11:11. 11, 11. It says, by faith, Sarah herself also received strength yes. yeah. to conceive seed. <laughs> and she bore a child when she was past the age because she judged him faithful. Faithful. Come on, promised. Jesus. Amen. Now, Good did you promise. notice here? <laughs> Hallelujah. Did you notice here? She had to receive the strength to even conceive of the seed of, to dream again. The seed of that promise of God's word. The word we know is seed. Mark 4. She had to receive. If you've been waiting a while, sometimes you, you may have thought it's too late. It's hopeless for me. It's impossible. And yes, in the natural with man, it's impossible, but not with God. Not with God. With no, our God, no. all Never. things are possible when we believe. So I encourage you today, lay hold of this. How did she receive the strength to even conceive the seed of that promise again? Here's how she did it. I judge God faithful. <laughs> Will you say that after me? I judge, I judge God, God faithful. 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 Hallelujah. That's it. Faithful God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. So over this process, that's what we look at each other and we do. I judge God faithful. Amen. There is no word from God that is void of power or impossible of fulfillment. And blessed are you when you believe that there shall be a fulfillment of those things spoken to you by the Lord. Amen. You have a promise from God. And God is not a man that he can lie. He can't no. do it. No. He can't do it. He, can't he do. is not a man that he can lie. Amen. You have a promise from God. So today I encourage you, in trust, take yourself out of your own keeping. All the sleepless nights, all the worried, anxious thoughts, I've dealt with it in the last year and a half. Take yourself out of your own keeping. Entrust himself, entrust yourself to his keeping and judge him faithful. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me ask you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Real faith has no fear. Amen. Not a little bit. Brother Coleman said it can contaminate faith. I mean, a little bit of fear will contaminate your faith. And, uh, and, and real faith, people who don't even know what it is want it. They want the real thing. They want, if there is a God, they want him. Yeah. You know, they know they need help. There isn't a, but you've got to decide, it takes out uh, part of the things going on in your life are impossible. Everybody's got some. Everybody's got some things that go in the impossible category. Mm -hmm. right. And, but that's a simple category for God. That's no big deal. 
I mean, yeah. you know, Keith Moore said, when they tell you you got um, terminal cancer, he said, why don't they say that about breathing? Because if you miss the next breath, it's your terminal. <laughs> if you don't get any more of the, the one you just took, you're eternal. <laughs> How about uh, uh, you slip up in the tub and drown in an inch of water? I mean, you know, there's all kind of dangerous stuff happening. But if you really be honest with yourself, one heartbeat, you're one heartbeat away from heaven. Right. If you're going there. Uh, yeah. and, and what determines if you're going there is if you, the real faith, that's what God likes. Yeah. Yeah. He, you want to please God? I know you do. I do, man, but, but I have to have the real thing. And I, until I continued and continued and continued, 25 years we've been praying. 25 years ago we married and, and immediately, I mean, what, a year, less than a year? I had that first major operation. Yes, uh-huh. I mean, 25 years of a lot of the infant, you know, in, uh, what's the word? Of, uh, lots of Infirmity, yes, thank you. Tag team preaching. <laughs> um, you know, Abraham did not consider his own body. Right. Now, if you start considering Amen. all impossibilities, you're in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. You won't ever get fully persuaded. Yeah. That's why God said, don't even go there. Leave that, to give it to me. Yeah. I can handle it. Mm-hmm. Give that to me. You take care of what I tell you to take care of, and I'll take care of you. I'll take care of your kids. I'll take care of your finances, your home. I know the good cars from the lemons. I know the, I know the sweet husbands from the uh, Green Hornet or whatever his name is. The, the guy, Hulk, get, yeah. the Hulk. Yeah. And so he'll tell you and he'll guide you in the right direction, but you have to be guided. Yeah. You, know, uh, you know, Keith Moore said that if you are in a situation where you need God's help, and the word says, having done all else to stand. Keith said, I would like to add this. If you haven't done all else, you're standing in the wrong place. <laughs> you need to check yourself and see, have I done what he told me to do? Yes. Because the moment I quit doing what he tells me to do, then from then on, I do what I want to do. I mean, I'm the Lord of my situation. Instead of when I admit to him, yes, Lord, and I do what he tells me, he's Lord. He's <clears throat> but it's that simple to take yourself out of the will of God. Yeah. None of us want to do that. We need to understand what we're doing when we disobey God. Now, it doesn't matter. I don't uh, necessarily understand everything he tells me to do. I just do it because he's God and I'm my own. <laughs> and, and I need his help. He don't need mine. He got all, he got thousands. He told Elijah, was Elijah that he had 7,000 more? Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, goodness gracious. That was back then, that, and then the small population. He had 7,000, not Elijah didn't know anything about it. <laughs> How many has he got now? Billions. He's got people ready to tell, okay, not being weak in faith, Romans 4, 19, and not being weak in faith, he did not consider somebody already dead already dead. The boy could not chase mom around the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Them days were over. He was dead since he was about a hundred years old. And the deadness of Sarah's womb, he didn't even consider it. He just said to himself, well, God's honest. I'm, this is going to be good. Mm-hmm. Well, how's he going to do it? I don't have any idea. He's never done it before that we know of. You know? Agreement is vital to victory, especially for marriages. Yes. Now, if you can't, here's what Jesus said. Wherever to agree in my name, yes. I'll be there. But you got to be in agreement. If you're fussing about it, he'll wait. That's it. But if you want him to show up, when he starts praying, when you two are in agreement about something, and Jesus Christ shows up and starts praying with you, their prayer is going to get answered yeah. because the power of God is behind it. Yes. This unfailing, it's impossible. That's the perfect prayer. That's the real faith, but you got to get there. You got to get to the place where, well, what if she's wrong? What if you're wrong? 
I mean, I have been once or twice. <clears throat> now, what if she's, go ahead, baby. Yeah, well, you know, we experienced this because the trial, the, the fight of faith was so intense at times, we had to um, com consistently communicate and stay in agreement, right? And I remember one time we were going back and forth about uh, treatment plans and what this doctor said this, this person said this. And, and by the way, we are so thankful for godly doctors. Yeah. Praise God for that. Amen. Right? Godly counsel. And we're, we're so thankful. Um, but in the midst of this, of going back and forth, I know one time I was, uh, the Lord just showed me, Christy, you've got to get, stay in agreement with him. If he makes a decision, it's according to his faith, Right that he's made whole. So you need to get in agreement and stay in agreement with him. And because Psalm 103, and then the Lord reminded me, and so once I repented for that and said, yes, Lord, and got back in agreement with my husband, then it, Psalm 103 says that that anointing, it flows from the throne room to the head, then down the beard, you know that passage, and then to the garment. So uh, even at our wedding, I remember when Brother Copeland said, Christy, as you stay in agreement with Mylon, you will flow and operate under his covering, right? Yeah. And so when I got back in agreement with Mylon, then that anointing flows from the head to the beard and, and on my life too. And the end of that passage says, for there in the Lord situation. commands the blessing, even yeah. life. life. Everywhere. forevermore. And in the Hebrew, that means one of the meanings means to be revived from sickness or even death yes. to sustain life. So God was ready to speak that blessing over our marriage. And in this situation to speak and command, how many of you know, that's like a general in the army, in the army, when they command their soldiers, how do you know when, how many of you believe that when God commands the blessing, even life forevermore is coming to pass, right? So once we got in agreement, once I got in agreement with my husband, now the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. And we, st we started seeing it turn at that moment, didn't we? Yeah. I mean, at that moment, it started yes. changing. And so I was, boy, I was my own worst enemy in that, Right. So that's why we're talking to you about humble. And we're yourself. doing everything we need to. We were praying. Right. We were oh, yes. We're, Brother Hayden calls it taking your medicine. We were doing it. We were taking some med serious medicine. I mean, all day, every day, we were confessing the word. We were reading the word and we were meditating the word mm -hmm. because God is our source. Yes, yes. He's, he's yes, yes. I live for him. He bought me with a price. If you knew what I had done before I became a Christian, you wouldn't let me preach to you probably. <laughs> and I ain't telling you. <laughs> Thank God I'm glad I'm not that guy anymore. That sucker's dead and he ought to be. Yeah. You know? But man, new life in Christ. So that's why humbling ourselves yeah. under the mighty hand of God, that's been consistent for us, yep. right? Yep. And it should be for all of us in that process of learning and growing and coming up higher. And, you know, even this week, um, we had something come up where uh, we were dealing with some symptoms and the Lord just prompted everything we're showing. Can you tell we're, we're talking to our home church here? Yeah. You guys are family, so we're really sharing our heart with you and how we've overcome in these situations. So we were dealing with some symptoms and he, he spoke to it and he came and he said, Chrissy, I'm dealing with a few symptoms. So immediately the Lord told me, agree with him right now. We got an agreement and the symptoms stopped. Immediately. So again, immediately. Immediately, right? So again, the power, we're talking to you about the power of agreement. And yes, in marriage, but also all of you, if you're single, then find, like Mark Hankins says, those four crazy faith friends. You need those, right? And get in agreement with someone of like precious faith. There is great power there. When we agree with God, when we get in agreement with God, He gets in agreement with us. Yeah. Think about that. Amen. God Almighty, mm -hmm. get in agreement with just any old body, just yeah. Joe Blow, LaFever. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just get in agreement with God. Man, that's yeah. simple. It ought to make this 
the, you know, th theology, it, uh, J.C. says it takes a real theologian to mess up God's word. <laughs> it takes, you got to really get in there and say some, some King James stuff. Mm -hmm. All right, my brethren, this is James 1, 28. Now, I want to pray with you. It's almost time to get out. And uh, I have not got overtime, by the way. Well, I'm probably <laughs> going to. I'm not going to lie to you. You know what? When a evangelist takes off his watch, you know what that means? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's what that means. He's just taking off his watch. You know? <clears throat> I want to pray with you before you leave today. If there's anything you need to get right in between you and God, then it's so simple. It's, it's one prayer. It's not 30 minutes. You don't have to beg God to do what he said he would do. He'll do it. He'll do and it. he'll do it quick. Yeah. He will erase every sin. He will let you start over. He will delete every solution that, he, that the devil has come up with you and replace them with real solutions mm -hmm. to solve every problem. Yeah, yeah. And, but I want, you, I want to pray with you before we leave today. But let me say this last thing right before I do that. Um, I am looking for a page five. Here it is. Here it One second. The word is see. Okay. Uh, we already had Mark 9, 23. We did. <laughs> All things are possible. Mm -hmm. And so the last thing I want to minister to you is James 1, uh, verse 28 in the New King James. Now, James was Jesus' half-brother. And he never got born again until Jesus died and was on the cross and rose again. And that's when he got born again. But the thought of, I grew up next to this guy. I made fun of him. He did all these miracles and he did all this good. And all I did was give him a hard time. And he was sorry his brother was gone to heaven he accomplished his goal without James's help. James broke the book of James. Now, if you're gonna, you got a, somebody you just led to the Lord, don't tell them to read James first. <laughs> he was tough. Yeah. He, once he gave his life to Jesus, he gave it all. Yeah. And he was, but what he's talking about here is test. My brethren, I remember the first time I read this, I thought, that's a joke. I mean, nobody can do that. Are you kidding? My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, and one version says temptations, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. He said, when all hell breaks loose, rejoice. I thought, are you kidding me? He says, this is a good deal. It's just a test, which means you can pass it. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, do y'all, I mean, I'm almost 80 years old, but do y'all, anybody in here remember high school or college? <laughs> you, they give you a semester of teaching. They give you a test. And if you pass the test, you, it's the springtime, you go to the next grade next year. Yeah, right. You know, you get promoted. Yes. That's how, what happens when you pass the test in God. You get promoted to a higher place, yeah. a new place, an exciting place, and another adventure where the, you've all beat all the, you, uh, Brother Coleman told me yesterday, we need to subjugate and you can pass the eighth. You don't ever have to go to the seventh test anymore. Mm -hmm. Our test, none of the seventh grade doesn't, you know. So God is trying to tell you, count of joy when you fall into trials, knowing it's only the test in your faith. Mm -hmm. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect, I mean, mature and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. Amen. Who gives to all liberally and without reproach. And it will be given to him, but let him ask in faith with no doubting. Mm -hmm. Now, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea that's driven and tossed by the wind. Yeah. Now this is to me the scariest one sentence in the Bible. Let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from God. Yeah. Let, I want you to please think about that. I mean, if you think going to church 
and standing with your arms in there and hollering hallelujah and praying in tongues or whatever, fasting, whatever you want to do, will change this. It won't. This is God's word. Mm -hmm. God said, for let not that man or woman suppose that they will receive anything from the Lord because he, he's double minded and unstable. That makes him unstable in all his ways. If God gives you a job, then when it gets hard to do, you're not going to finish the job. You're going to get scared. I mean, a lot of people, when the test starts, they run, oh God, oh my big Lord. As if crying would take the place of faith. And our obedience. Now, if you want God's best, then the key is to humble yourself. Yes. You can please him by not being proud. That, I mean, if you're proud, according to him, he has to set himself against you. He will say, man, think about that. that I mean, the living God, you ain't going anywhere. You say, if he sets himself against you, you're done. You lose. And Christians are some, I mean, I've seen times in my life when I was proud of being humble. <laughs> I thought I was doing real good. I was real proud of myself. No, come on, we gotta be, well, acting humble and being humble are two different things, people. Yeah. Yeah. If God's people ought to be kind, yeah. gentle, yeah. Brother Copeland is so, for all these years he has set the example for me of being kind and gentle with and man there's times when he Lord told him stuff he's reading my mail man I didn't you know I didn't want him to know some stuff and he would he could have nailed me he could have crushed me and man he just came and encouraged me picked me up dusted me off no son this is the way walk in and he gave me back on the path Give me back, pray for me, love on me, treat me like a son, the adopted, mm -hmm. and just uh, love on me. Now, that's who we're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. That's not who he's supposed to be. He is. But that's who we're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. If we're God's disciples, we're supposed to be like, if we're Jesus Christ's disciples, we're supposed to be like Jesus Christ. Yes. We're supposed to give people mercy. Even when they don't deserve it, like we didn't. Amen. We're supposed to love them when they're unlovable. Yes. We're supposed to be kind when they're unkind. Yes. We're supposed to have joy unspeakable and full of joy, when glory, when they don't even know what that means. Yes. If we'll give it to them, they'll have it. Yes. Now you have salvation in you. Yes. You have the living God inside you. Amen. Everywhere you go, you are an anointed person. And if you want to, you can be that, that thing that's God-like in your life. It is what I would call conducive to a, what is the word, baby? Now, hun. Um, it means that it's, you can catch it. It's contagious. contagious. <laughs> God wants to give you something holy that's contagious. Yeah, I mean, I where, when you're down at the mall, you bump into somebody at the elevator on the, uh, that they get on, that he gets on. He, gets on. Yeah. he said, "In the last days, I'm going to pour my spirit. Not, not you, I. I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh. All. Mm -hmm. Y'all from Texas now. Y'all know how to say it. All. All, all flesh. All Pimps. Right. Dealers." People you don't even want to hang out with? Now, now either we're going to tell them the truth because they don't know it. What's going to happen on that day when he says, I'm pouring out my flesh on everybody and the cars start pulling over the road and people are crying and, and you're watching TV and the guy don't know, know why, but he's crying. He's trying to tell the weather or the news. Mm -hmm. It's up to us to stand up and say, this is that, spoken by the prophet Joel. Amen. It's up to me and you to tell them the truth because God's going to give everybody in his mercy. It's good God. we this good, loving, kind God. He's going to give everybody one last chance. And then, then he's going to take his church out of here. 
And yes. he's going to take everybody he can out of here. Yes. But those that refuse him and want to be their own and have religion, well, there's going to be a lots of churches still full. Oh, God, whoever said in my seat can have it. I'm going to the first load. How about y'all? Yes, yeah. Now, let's... <laughs> well, I'm done. You believe that? <laughs> I'm done. I just got to... Uh, we want to pray. Yeah. We just believe that today... I got this scripture, 2 Corinthians 6, 2, in the NLT, for God says, indeed... The right time is now. Amen. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of deliverance for you if you're ready to receive. Today is the day of your healing. Today is the day. And then Nebuchadnezzar, we've been talking about coming out of the fire, right? <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning, fiery furnace and he spoke. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants, of the Most High God, come out. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we're speaking to you today. Today is the day of salvation, and it's time to come out. Come out of the fiery furnace. Come out of that fire. Come out of depression. Come out of fear. Hallelujah. I, I want to say this. I'm, on, uh, I'm not going to ask you to come down here. I'm not going to lay my hands on you. I'm just smiling, you know. The, but I, I want to have a point of contact. And I'm going to pray God. And I believe, I've read this book. Um, Oral Roberts, if you need healing. Right. Who, who, what's her name that gave it to me? Oh, Lori. Lori, goodness gracious. Lori Graves gave me one of Brother uh, Oral Roberts' first books, 1957. And it was about, uh, if you need healing, do these things. Mm. And Oral Roberts in, the young, in his young Boy, he had terminology that was a little different. Some that we've been taught is like Brother Hagen would say certain things a certain way. Brother Copeland says certain things a certain way. But Old Roberts had some t terminology that was different. And one of the things he would do, he thought it was important he taught Kenneth, um, you've got to have a release point. There's got to point come a time, point of contact, he called it. And uh, so we're going to have a point of contact. Yeah. Now, I don't know what's going on in your lives. It's none of my business. Uh, nobody needs to know but you and God. Right. But you need to confess to everything. Everything doesn't mean most things. <laughs> you need to confess everything to God. Today, you can start over. Today, yes. that's right. Yes. But if you're proud, you won't. You won't stand up in front of these people because we're in church. We're in a faith church. Well, I'm a faith preacher that had a bunch of things wrong. When I started speaking the things that are not as they were, I was speaking the things that were as though they are not. Right. Mm. And I thought that was the way you do it. And I had to see the difference in, in God. Uh, and only God can show me that. He wants to do some stuff for you. He's to save my life. Yeah. It's not over. I mean, I realized some things need to get, continue to get stronger and better. But it, I have made it through the fire. Yeah. I'm on the other side. Yeah. Now I'm standing yeah. on the promise of God. And there's some of y'all that need to do that today. Yeah. You made that, you, if you're sick of being sick, if you're tired of being tired, mm. if you're ready, this is the time to humble yourself. Yeah. Who cares what everybody else thinks of me? Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. I mean nothing. Jesus is everything. This ain't about us. This ain't about you and your little sin. Your uh, quote, unquote, uh, secret sin. There's no such thing about that. <clears throat> so I want to ask you, if you're here, you got depression, you got divorce you're in the middle of, your kid may be giving you a fit and uh, your finances messed up. I don't know. I don't know what's going on in your life. But I, I know this, I'm going to say a prayer in a minute. And if you'll get yourself in agreement with me, then God will get in agreement with us. Yeah. And you'll be shocked what happened. Hallelujah. And I can't describe it because I've never seen it but a few times. And it's always been real up close and personal. But this morning, God told me he's going to do a brand new thing. He's going to heal and change the lives of a whole bunch of people. He's yeah. going to do it in an instant. 
Hallelujah. He's going to do it. And then so hallelujah. if you have any need that you want to start over and you're willing to humble yourself before God and all his people and you want prayer about something, and, and I'm saying I'm going to say this because I'm going to make it, I don't want to make it easy for you. I want you to really truly think about what does it mean to humble yourself mm. under the mighty hand of God. To humble yourself, to admit, I've been missing it somewhere. God help me. Will you stand up? If, if that's your case, I want to pray for you. Yeah. Anybody? Praise man. God, man. God's doing it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy God. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go up top. Mm. Well, Father, we come to you, sir, in the holy name of Jesus. And Lord, you know what's going on in our lives. We need your help. We need Holy Spirit. You're our helper. You're our teacher. You're our, our Lord and our Jesus. And, and Father, you're our God. Yes. We ask now that you would touch the people. That you would do it in such a holy way that they would know it's you. Yes. And God, that you would let them see that this is the day this they started their lives brand new. Amen. Everything went under the blood of Jesus. Everything, every mistake, every sin, every wrong decision, yes. every unwise decision. We plead the blood of Jesus over them and we ask you to cleanse them from all unrighteousness. Thank you. If you have a a uh, place that needs healing in your body or it's just your mind or whatever it is, put your one hand on there and put your hand toward heaven. When I say in the name of Jesus, that's our point of contact. We're going to release our faith. Oral said he told God at that point, Father, I give him my faith. Yeah. Just quiet between him and God. And he said he could tell when that point of contact was made how they changed the lives of the people. Will you pray it with me? Yeah. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, in the name of Jesus. I repent for any mistake I've made. I repent for any mistake I've made. I don't want to displease you, sir. I don't want to displease you. I want to please you. I want to please you. By believing you. I believe you. And if I believe you are God. I believe you are God. Then help me please. Help me, to treat you like God. To, treat you like God. To, to humble myself before to humble you. myself. And receive your best. And receive your best. Here's the point of contact, everybody. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We pray this thing. Glory to God. Oh, in the highest. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Bless your holy name, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. And when you get home today, when you get home after lunch, go to you, spend just a few minutes, get before God and get quiet, alone if possible, or with your mate. If I mean, Christian, I do everything together. So that's the way we stay in agreement. So if you. We want to spend a few minutes, just a few minutes with God and say, Lord, what is this thing you want me to change? Because that's what it's about. Real honor, real love. If you love God, you will do things his way. Mm -hmm. And that will cause, I'm not, I'm, I'm like Mylon and I want to be like Jesus. Mm -hmm. But there, something's got to change. Mm -hmm. You can't have it both ways. It's one or the other. Yeah. You say the same, you're the Lord of your own life, you're the church life. Read the Bible, etc. Or you just get over it. Get over yourself. Paul said, I, I died to my, I'm no longer live. Yeah. But Christ lives in me. And so, you, and you know, just one last encouragement get in agreement 
Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Give yourself completely to Him. Take yourself out of your own keeping. That's what we just led you in. And entrust yourself in that situation to His keeping. And you and your household will be saved. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Pastor Jean. Amen. Give him a hand.